Welcome to our devotion today. We're going to be in Psalm 103. I hope you have your journals ready. There is uh, uh, much uh, praise and adoration in Psalm 103 that can be incorporated into our prayers. I wanted to start off with a question. Um, It's actually from a writing in a devotion from uh, Billy Graham on Thanksgiving. And he asked, are you thankful no matter what? Are you thankful no matter what? Uh, Perhaps you have lost your job, he says recently, as the economy has continued to struggle. Or you may have lost your health or even a loved one. Such circumstances can be tremendously difficult, but even so, we all have much to be thankful for. He says uh, in his writing, he says, Look with me at the story of a man who had every right to be bitter, but wasn't. The next footsteps in the corridor he knew might be those of the guards taking him away to his execution. His only bed was the hard, cold stone floor of the dank, cramped prison cell. Not an hour passed when he, uh, not an hour passed when he was free from constant irritation, of the chains and the pain of the iron manacles cutting into his wrist and his legs. Separated from friends, unjustly accused, brutally treated, if every person had a right to complain, it was this man, languishing almost <clears throat> forgotten in a harsh Roman prison. But instead of complaints, his lips rang with words of praise and thanksgiving. The man, of course, was the Apostle Paul, a man who had learned the meaning of true thanksgiving even in the midst of his great adversity. Earlier when he had been imprisoned in Rome, Paul wrote, Sing and make music in your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of Jesus Christ. And we find that in Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 19 and 20. Think of it, always giving thanks for everything, no matter the circumstance. Thanksgiving for the Apostle Paul was not a once a year celebration, but a daily reality that changed his life and made him a joyful person in every situation. When we come to Psalm 103, I'm reminded of Andrea Crouch's uh, song that he penned with the same words of Psalm 103. Uh, The wonderful praise song is, Bless His Holy Name. He sings, He has done great things, He has died for my sins, and Jesus Christ is Lord. Our prayers are sweetened and our prayers are strengthened when we pray, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless His holy name. Our minds, our hearts are renewed to God's strength and power, His love and mercy. Instead of remaining focused on our trials or even sufferings that cause bitterness to grow and doubt and defeat to become our circumstance, we need to focus in our prayers not only of our asking, but in our thanksgiving in all circumstance, even as we ask of the Lord. Our minds, our hearts that sing, Bless the Lord, soon finds peace in the valley, even though war rages all around us. In 2020, all that has taken place with coronavirus, civil unrest, great injustices, and so much more in economic crises, uncertainty, school closings for an indefinite time, uh, churches now being on trial in certain states to close or not to sing and worship, Riots, looting, murder rates so high we cannot keep up with the names of the children and youth who were slaughtered either in their homes or on the streets. And one of the most perplexing questions we are faced with is, will it ever be normal again? Whatever that normal is or was, and whatever we think normal to be, will it ever be normal again? The list goes on and on this year, doesn't it? Uh, If that be our focus, if all that is going on around us is our focus, we are truly, we are truly with no hope. But the psalmist announces in verse 1, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. 
Bless means to uh, to be thankful, grateful, to uh, give thanksgiving and praise to the one. The word picture is kneeling before God Almighty to give the thanksgiving. So instead of standing in the midst of the troubles, we kneel before holy God and bless his name. Um, all that is within me, not parts that are in peaceful valleys, but all of me to give the praise, bless his holy name. He exhorts us to bless the Lord. And then he gives us six reasons. I, I found that interesting when I counted out the six that he gives in the following verses. The six reasons can be remembered that we were created, male and female, on the sixth day. It's uh, known uh, to, to many people that the number six is man's number. And so as man made of dust, uh, our time is like the breath uh, of one. It's, it's quick. It comes and it goes. We can find six reason, reasons in our life to bless the Lord. And so the first one he says in verse 2 is, as he says, Bless the Lord, O my soul. Number one is, forget not all his benefits. All of his advancements towards us, all of his works towards us, uh, his love, his mercy, all the benefits that when those times in our life when we didn't think we could breathe one more breath, guess what? The next day we woke up and breathed again. My point is that sometimes things look so devastating in the current circumstance that our hearts and minds become clouded to where we don't give thanksgiving. The first reason to be thankful to the Lord is all of the Lord's benefits towards us. And as we study scripture, as we pray to the Lord, we find these benefits and we can recount them to the Lord. Number two, he says he forgives all your iniquity. Um, the forgiveness is what man kind seeks, even those who uh, wouldn't use those words. We, we want to be freed from those things that we've done wrong. And the Lord forgives all of our iniquity, sin, wrongdoing. Three, he heals all of our diseases. Uh, temporally, as we walk along and we uh, receive uh, dire news of a medical condition, the Lord heals us from those, either here and now, or certainly when we come into the kingdom, we uh, no longer will have the trials of the body flesh. The Lord heals us, and he heals all your distresses, uh, your diseases, your sufferings. All these things, God heals the brokenhearted. Uh, number four, he redeems your life from the pit. Think of those times that uh, so dark, so lonely, so so much suffering, and the Lord lifted you up and out of those things. Maybe you're in the pit today. The Lord redeems your life from the pit. The greatest pit of mankind is our condition of sin, uh, enmity, separation from God. And God so loved us, he sent his only begotten son, so he redeems us. He has purchased us back through his blood, and he redeems us so that he brings us to new life in Christ Jesus. And not only that, but the sixth reason, he crowns, the fifth reason, he crowns us with steadfast love and mercy. We walk with a crown, uh, 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 an anointing, a covering over us called a crown, and the crown is God's steadfast love, never-ending love, and his mercy, things that we don't deserve, God still pours out upon us. And then the sixth reason is he satisfies you with good so that your youth is renewed like eagles. What does he mean by that? In those times when we seem like we can't move another step, God himself renews us in the freshness of his Holy Spirit. So we bless the Lord. We give him great praise, and I would encourage us to be uh, in our private times, in our prayers and meditations on our knees, blessing the Lord because he forgets not all, uh, because we forget not all his benefits, that he has forgiven us all of our iniquities. He heals us. He redeems us. He crowns us with his mercy and love, and he satisfies us. Now, the psalmist moves from here and gives us three confessions in prayer to remind us as we bless the Lord and, and that his worthiness 
for our blessings to say, bless the Lord, all my soul. Uh, The Lord, number one, verse uh, six, the Lord works righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed. Uh, Our eyes have been opened in our culture of the injustices, the oppressions against people. And though we seem as a nation, as a people, not to find the solutions to this, even those who continue on in their wickedness of oppressing others, here's why we can bless the Lord. There is a judgment day, and even in the temporal, in the here and now, God looks upon those who commit the injustice, the oppression, and He, God, works out His justice his righteousness against them. We uh, bless the Lord because we trust that our Lord in his righteousness and justice covers those who are oppressed, watches over those who are oppressed. This doesn't mean we sit back and do nothing because we're in Christ. Uh, Through his blood and resurrection, we walk in Christ. And so we have his gifting and we we have his wisdom from above and so we are to move in his righteousness and his justice knowing that it is god who covers the oppressed Um, we also says in verse 7 that he made known his ways to moses his acts to the people of israel this psalm was written in in old testament times and moses was some four thousand years ago And, and so what does this have to do with us today Uh, You might recall that Moses uh, murdered an Egyptian soldier, and God still used him for God's glory. You might recall that the people of Israel were constantly rebelling against God, and God still blessed them, and God still moved them along as a nation of people. We, in the same manner, in, in all of our sin and iniquity, in Christ Jesus has been forgiven, and He, God, has made known His ways to us in Christ. If he could work with the Old Testament people, he certainly works with the church today. And so God's ways are uh, unchanging. He does, he's not a different God from the Old Testament God to the New Testament God. He has made known his ways. When I am uncertain on the path that I take, I can bless the Lord with all my soul because I know he will show me the path. He will lead me in the right paths of righteousness. Next, the psalmist says, the Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. Uh, The Lord is merciful. He does things for us that we do not deserve. He doesn't give us the things we want over the needful things that he provides us. In other words, God knows our needs and he is a merciful God to fill those needs with his goodness, with his wisdom. And so he is gracious toward us undeserving that I am, God has loved me so in Christ Jesus. Now, in verse 9, continuing on with this truth that the Lord is merciful and gracious, he says he will not always chide, nor will he keep his anger forever. We need to have an understanding of this verse that the psalmist uh, was under the law in the Old Testament time. Christ had not come and sacrificed his life on the cross for our need. And so uh, God is is angry toward sin. But let us not forget verse 10. uh, In Christ, he does not deal with us according to our sins. Why? Christ Jesus paid in full our sin debt. He does not deal with us according to our sins. If he did, we would perish. If he dealt with us according to our sins, we would be under the wrath of God. And so he does not repay us according to our sins. He repays us according to uh, his love in his son, Jesus Christ. And to his son, Jesus Christ, he is exalted above every other name in the heavens and on earth. Every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. God has exalted his anointed, Christ Jesus, and he has placed us who believe in Christ Jesus. And those. so therefore, he treats us, he, uh, he repays us, he deals with us according to his love in Christ Jesus. I want you to just think about the suffering Christ in his earthly ministry all that he endured and suffered for you and for me. And God exalted him, raised him up, and placed him 
above all. And so my point is, in our most uh, trying moments, even when we have failed in sin, God does not repay us <clears throat> according to this. He repays us in Christ, who is love. Uh, for as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his steadfast love toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far does he remove our transgressions from us. As a father shows compassion to his children, so the Lord shows compassion to those who fear him. For he knows our frame. He remembers that we are dust. We were created from the dust of the ground. We are temporal. We are earthly flesh. We have a time to live and a time to die. But in Christ Jesus, he, knowing our condition, he has made us eternal in Christ. We have a great hope, a great expectation that at the last day we shall rise in flesh in Christ and receive a glorified flesh, no longer prone to sin, no longer... Uh, where there will be tears and weeping, but we will be in the kingdom forever. And the psalmist here is recounting this in his prayer so that his temporal trials and sufferings are nothing in comparison to the glories and riches that we will have in Christ Jesus. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Why? For Christ Jesus has died for my sins. Christ Jesus has imparted himself in me, and Christ Jesus has given me new life to walk in him, and Christ Jesus shall redeem my soul for all of eternity. He shows compassion. Key words, those who fear him, you see that throughout here. Our days are like grass. Uh, we flourish for a moment like a green grass or a flower, and then the next day it is gone as the wind passes over it. Um, we no longer, after death, have a place in this world. But praise be to God, because of the steadfast of Lord, love of the Lord, which is from everlasting to everlasting, he has not made us temporal because of our sin. In Christ, he has made us eternal, because Christ Jesus, God, is eternal. And so, when we are looking at temporal problems and sufferings, bless the Lord, because we serve the mighty, eternal God. Uh, he says, on those who fear him and his righteousness to his children's children. What does this mean? That this love is not cast only upon me in Christ, but to my children's children, to those who keep his covenant and remember to do his commands. Uh, church, as we pray, as we lift our requests for the Lord, we should equally and mightily uh, praise the Lord and bless his name for his goodness toward us. And not only toward us, but those we love and even the future generations. Uh, we have a great God who has demonstrated his love on the cross of Calvary. And he has uh, vindicated himself through the resurrection, uh, the rising from the dead. And he has given us this new life in himself. And as this temporal life passes... We are ushered into the kingdom of God forever and ever. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness, and then all these other things shall be added unto you. We serve a awesome and a mighty God, and so as we are contemplating our current circumstances, we are seeing things around us that are discouraging. Remember, we serve the eternal God. Remember that the eternal God has redeemed us. And so recount those six things of bless the Lord, O my soul. Confess the strength of the Lord in your prayers, because the psalmist then next prays, The Lord has established his throne in the heavens, and his kingdom rules over all. The wicked and the oppressive, those who are causing evil in the world, those who seem to get away with everything all the time that is wrong, remember, the Lord rules over all. There is a day of judgment. He also looks in our temporal, and he acts upon uh, the hearts of men and women. He uh, relieves the oppressed. He cares for the oppressed. And so we can shout out in praise as we bless, bless the Lord that he has established his throne forever and ever and that it's in the heavens and his kingdom rules over all. In all that, we realize of this great prayer, we should at all times and all circumstances bless the Lord. And so as we end this psalm, not only do we bless the Lord 
but we join in in chorus as the psalmist says, bless the Lord, O you his angels, angels, the messengers of God, the mighty angels of God. <clears throat> we, we join in with them in singing, bless the Lord. Uh, he says, bless the Lord, all his host and army. Who's the army? His servants, you and I in Christ. Bless the Lord who do his will. We join in with the angels. He says, bless the Lord all his works in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Here's what I'd like you to do today as I, I sign off. I want you to take your journals and I want you to just write out the phrase, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. I want you to write that out and I want, I want you to make that part of your prayer in Christ. And underneath that, I want you to list the six things to recall to your mind, to your heart, to focus on in your prayers as you ask him of things and as you uh, thank him for uh, the wondrous things that he has done. Add to your list that he, that, that I do not forget all of his benefits towards me, his advantages, his works, his love toward me, that he has forgiven me. So many people walk uh, in the church today thinking that God is still holding a grudge against past sins. Jesus said, I am just and faithful to forgive. Have we sought forgiveness through the blood of Jesus? If so, he has removed it as far as the east is from the west. Stop living in defeat and live in the victory of Jesus Christ. And by praying these things, it reminds your heart to live in that victory. So forget not his benefits. Uh, he has forgiven all your iniquities. He heals all your diseases. Don't pick and choose there. Don't think God picks and chooses. Use the word of God in your prayer. It is blessed. It is ordained. The Holy Spirit of God has spoken them out. He heals all your diseases. He redeems your life from the pit, your dark moments. He redeems your life. He crowns you. He places upon your head the crown of his steadfast love, never-ending love and mercy. And write down that he satisfies you with good things so that your youth is restored like eagles, so that you have the energy, that you have uh, the willingness and the, uh, the energy to move forward in Christ's way. Write these things down and don't just write them and close it and never refer to them, but use them in your prayer life. We serve a great and an awesome God. A God who has shed forth his blood to uh, save us, to forgive us. And even more, he has risen from the dead to give us new life. Because Christ Jesus lives, so too shall I. What victory in our prayer life. Remember, the prayer of thanksgiving where we call out and say, Bless the Lord, O my soul. This sweetens and empowers our prayers towards the victory of the Lord. For if we focus on our trials and troubles all the time, we live in doubt and defeat. He didn't give us a, a spirit of fear or timidness. He has given us the spirit of power. And so let us walk in that. And by renewing in this thanksgiving in all circumstances, let us too say in our prayers, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. May God bless you this day, and uh, may your journals become thick with the things of the Lord to pray to him. And as we pray, let us see the Lord move in such a mighty and a wondrous way. We'll see you tomorrow. God bless you.